everybody, it is Marnie here from Earth Heart Healing. Welcome, welcome to another video. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an energy healer and a spiritual coach. I'm an author and I'm also the creator of an online healing platform called Earth Heart Healing. The website is earthhearthealing.com if you want to check it out. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions as well as transformational programs. Um, but today, it's not what I'm here to talk about. Today, I'm here to do some book reviews on a couple books by Rudolf Steiner. The first one is called Lucifer and Aramon. And the second one is called The Electronic Doppelganger, The Mystery of the Double in the Age of the Internet. And Luce, uh, <laughs> Lucifer, Rudolf Steiner was a philosopher, mystic type of person, intellectual, um, very active creator who was alive in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And this book, this book on Lucifer and Aramon was created from lectures that he gave in 1917. And they're really great for this time in our world because of all the changes that are happening. They've helped me greatly to make sense of the world in a way that still works with self-empowerment, with spiritual development, with soul sovereignty, all these beautiful qualities. And I'll preface the video by giving a little bit of a background um, regarding my last two years of life, three years now, ever since the pandemic started, and my kind of general desire to make sense of the extra information that was given to us when the veil kind of allowed us to see above the glass ceiling of our current global systems about who's running what and their intentions. And for me, the mind-blowing lesson or understanding that spiritual lineages are alive and well in our secret brotherhoods, that there's esoteric knowledge and wisdom shared within those circles at the highest levels um, that are not given to the general general humanity as a whole, um, the grassroots, the grassroots world, the world that I grew up in. Um, so Another angle I want to share with you is that when I did wake up spiritually in 2012, one of the earliest memories that I had in a meditation, a silent retreat, was a past life memory of being stabbed in a ritual way, also related to ecstasy or spirit or sexuality, um, stabbed in that type of scenario. And it never really made sense to me. I could never place like it sounds horrible and it's jarring to hear that experience shared out loud uh, in healing school, I would always question like, why does this show up? What's it all about? I had no context to place it. So that was one thing that, you know, as an energy signature was resonant within my field. Another experience I had was during um, my yoga teacher training, we had a really awesome healer come in and do a drum meditation and something came up in my memory of a past life, whether it was a past life or just a soul channeling or being that wanted to come through and share it felt like a past life but nobody knows for sure those kind of things um people have different perspectives on that subject um but it was of, of me as a priest in the vatican working to help create a more codependent connection between husband and wife so that personal sovereignty wouldn't be developed in the level that is required for soul development which helps to keep the human population at a more um, slave-like, herd-like kind of way, as opposed to um, bringing people onto the track of self-empowerment. So that being was intriguing because he showed up there as a memory. And then later on in another healing I had with, with a healer, um, he showed up again during a, a past life clearing is what we were doing. Uh, and he seemed to be almost like a guide that wanted to stick around. So whether or not he, he, me, however it is that I, you can like make sense of that in a nonlinear type of way, um, learned the error of their ways and now wanted to correct the, the actions, I guess a karmic retribution, if you will, um, and help disseminate information about the truth of human nature, what's possible, the control structures that govern our world and kind of right the wrongs that he had partaken in. He, another curious aspect to this um, 
personality or quality or expression was that they refused to go to heaven because morally they knew they didn't deserve it. And because they refused to go to heaven, they were staying within their integrity. And that was a really interesting quality for me to experience within their, I don't know, being. Um, so because I had such an interesting kind of predisposition in myself to want to learn about the dark side or understand, I learned later on that ritual sacrifice is a thing, that sexual sacrifice, you know, basically my past life was a memory of, yeah, being in that type of environment in a sexual kind of orgy kind of expression and then being sacrificed. And that's, you know, makes a lot more sense when you look at the uh, dark or left-hand path and some of their ways that they connect with spirit in a more lower vibrational, very fleshy kind of kind of way, right? Um, so at the same time, as the pandemic started, I started to learn about secret societies and how they functioned. I started to learn about satanic ritual abuse and all this really hit a chord within me. And I was hitting something probably in my own history that was coming up to be cleared. And I really felt destabilized in what I knew or what I believed myself to be as a spiritual seeker and healer and um, disseminator of, of knowledge and I guess human evolution in a way, which seemed like big to topics, but you know, it's just always where my focus goes. So why not just say it like it is? <laughs> um, and I noticed that some of the teachings I had originally really gravitated towards were created by what seemed to be a Luciferic, a Lucifer impulse. For example, there's the Lucius Trust, um, and some of my books were connected to that that I had first first purchased. I guess at the time, 10 years ago, I didn't think to like go into, you know, the deeper roots of where these books were coming from. I was just so overjoyed and so, you know, in that love and expression of like reading something that resonates so deeply with your spirit and being, you know, given access to some greater truths that were previously to me as an atheist, not available. Um, so learning that some of the new age, uh, theories and disseminations of, of knowledge and wisdom are coming from maybe a more nefarious intent. You know, for example, with Doreen Virtue, who used to be like a really big new age author and teacher, Oracle card creator, she came out in the last five years to explain that a lot of the deities in the new age are actually demons. And that also jarred me because a lot of, um, even though I never resonated strongly with like the, the channel of the new age, whatever that was, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I am a spiritual seeker, but the new age seems to be something like a, a different, a little bit of a different path. It's not something that I, you know, ever proclaimed myself to be um, taking part in, but spirituality kind of includes all of life in a way. It's just a greater awareness of the truth of every of what is already available to us within a, just by incarnating into a human a human vessel we have access to some of these truths so i really liked rudolf steiner's work because he explains in a way that allows us to keep our sovereignty allows to keep allows us to keep our personal core activated um what's going on on the planet why we're seeing all these like big shifts or big pushes or big movements or even divisive polarization of different belief structures. And I have to tell you truthfully that since I moved home to where I grew up, um, I had a more Republican sort of conservative um, viewpoint. And that probably has everything to do just with my genetics within my family line. Um, but I was definitely understanding the importance of family, of having the government less invested in your personal life. Um, and, but as I've grown back into balance and it felt like at that time, there was this big swing of just like zoom, just going right over to one side and like, whoa, I resonate so strongly with that. But when you're on one side, you're gonna be against another side, right? So, or, or, or seemingly thinking you need to push against something, which is good for growth. It's an aspect of growth to push against something, to have um, tension or pressure, right? It helps us evolve. So thinking about things like that in a in a, a more energetic 
science or mathematical type of way is kind of, I think, what helps us keep our sovereignty. So I find that Rudolf Steiner really helps to kind of disseminate that information in a way that keeps it so close to home within our human nature. So he <laughs> talks about three deities or three global avatars. Those are my words, but I, I, I kind of feel into the Christ being like a global impact avatar, which everyone, you know, whom is easy to connect with because of his morality and because of his polarization towards the good. That's how he's been offered to humanity, right? It's a very, it's a very heart-centered expression, the Christ. Christ consciousness comes from the heart. It's a, it's a, a zero point impulse that stems from the subtle energetics of that space. It helps us connect into kind of the zero point expression of life itself. And which is a place that allows us to be able to transform and alchemize every experience that comes forward to us as an individual. Um, so I always really easily resonated with Christ. I would always, often say I love Jesus, even though I was no longer Catholic. Um, but then learning that Lucifer had an element in wisdom and higher knowledge, it freaked, it actually freaked me out in a big way. I was like, okay, how does this fit in? I thought I was learning from Jesus, but now I'm learning from Lucifer. This is, you know, and he's supposed to be the arch nemesis of Jesus. He's the devil. You mean like all these things come through, right? Um, but Lucifer, Rudolf Steiner explains Lucifer as being a, an incarnation that happened prior to Jesus, 3,000 years before Jesus, and that when we look at him from more of a energetic impulse or the or quality or essence of a being, it's easier to place those qualities within our own life experience for our benefit. So Lucifer was the being that brought forth kind of the flowering of antiquity. So the beauty of, you know, for example, like Greece and Rome and all the beautiful Greek gods and the sculptures and the philosophy and the art that came forward that has a corresponding connection with balance and harmony and higher ideals. Um, but what wasn't developed at that time within humanity was our morality. So we had higher knowledge, but we didn't have personal morality within our own expression. We were now individualizing our higher chakras with his incarnation, with Lucifer's incarnation. Prior to that, we didn't really have a strong individualization. We had a connection, a pagan connection to the cosmos and the stars and the plant kingdom and the, the elements on earth, the devas, the fairies, the gnomes, the animals, the crystals, the minerals. We were connected above and below in a strong way. Um, but again, we had no individual um, free will, if you will. We were kind of connected so strongly to the flow of life that all we could do was in the moment witness and express that flow in a way that worked in unison with the whole. Then Lucifer incarnated and we were able to then adapt an individualized perspective on knowledge, wisdom, higher ideals, higher understandings. And that impulse of Lucifer, it was, it actually brought forward an, um, the impulse to kind of remove ourselves from our human nature because we, you know, as a fallen angel, his, I guess, greatest I, desire is to move back into those higher echelons, but in a way that is individuated from God, perhaps not in alignment with God, but in alignment with his own will to move back into those higher levels of heaven and higher dimensions of life. So in a mirrored type of way, if we're only working with the Luciferic energy, we'll want to kind of transcend or have this idea of transcending our human body, of kind of looking down on immoral expressions with our noses up, as opposed to with compassion, which is the part that comes through the heart center of the Christ energy. Another truth that Rudolf Steiner brings in through these books is that, which resonates with me, I have no other proof other than it feels true in my heart, that beings of these great magnitude magnitudes like Lucifer and Christ can only incarnate onto the earth once. So once they've completed their incarnation, their reason for being here, they can know they know how longer have access from the higher levels to reincarnate 
um, but they do stay as a global uh, quality or global energy in the etheric astral level of life. And that resonated with me quite strongly because we always talk about this Christ, Christ consciousness or Christ impulse. And, you know, in the Catholic faith, they say Christ is going to come again. And it's very literal in their learning and their, in their scripture. But for me, it always seems something more, um, like a quality-based expression. And Rudolf Steiner explains it just like that, that Christ as a kind of a global avatar is still here supporting our inner evolution through the astral plane, through the etheric world. And we can connect in with that Christ impulse through our heart and then and develop it within our own beings. Um, and that's where you get all these light workers kind of developed people. Even, you know, I'm sure there's you know, souls in all walks of life that have that connection to Christ, um, really as a quality and the quality for me. So if Lucifer is that higher wisdom, philosophy, higher ideals related to balance and um, angelic expression in a way, Christ is the morality, is the realize that realization that those higher ideals now bringing them downwards into the heart that connects us to our divine inner child. So usually the heart of Christ is kind of activated through that realization that we are that pure innocent beautiful divine inner child in our expression as a human being and then our energy signature in a way kind of upgrades if you will or vibrates higher and any expression within ourselves that doesn't match that purity or or express an alignment with that goodness if you will um, needs to be purified and alchemized and that actually creates a vibrational shift within our within our blood within our body within our organs within our entire being vibrationally um, upgrades our expression and we can all do this work when our heart centers become activated. So there's also an, uh, a bit of information that he shares that for whatever reason with these secret brotherhoods or bloodlines, uh, you know, we hear them like bloodlines of the Illuminati or the left-hand path, the right-hand path, um, and I just want to point out that I've seen stars a lot lately. I know this is a a, a starfish, um, but I have no conscious awareness of being a part of some hidden order of, of of beings. Although probably in past lives I was, but right now I'm just an average person who studied, who had a spiritual awakening and then studied um, <laughs> the world of spirituality and energy healing. And I love to put puzzle pieces together. So for my own um, inner settling, <laughs> of my mind and my spirit I like to understand things so that's all I'm doing here is sharing with you what has resonated with me what has worked with me and literally this is a star necklace I bought with my mom it's a real starfish and I got it in Florida when I went there to visit uh, around Christmas time this year um, so I'm always looking at symbols and things in videos so I just felt like uh, clarifying a little bit that I'm not doing that just to be secretly showing you that I'm part of some kind of system um, I just thought it was a pretty necklace. <clears throat> so where was I? So, okay. So for whatever reason, uh, Rudolf Steiner explains that the secret brotherhoods decided to kind of whitewash the fact that Lucifer incarnated from the average uh, human, regular human in the world and keep that knowledge just in the higher echelons of humanity. Um, and and then that the Christ energy sort of got co-opted by those brotherhoods to be able to use it for control. So that's where we get like with the Roman, the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church that Jesus will come again because these secret brotherhoods, you know, this is a really kind of flipping the story, the traditional status quo information right on its head and adding some other elements into it. So it does shift the narrative quite a bit, but it resonates with me more than some of the things that we get through our mainstream culture. So that's why I'm sharing it with you here. So Christ incarnates and he, and Rudolf Steiner explains that about, you know, a couple cent, a couple decades after, I think he says four decades after Christ um, came onto the planet and birthed Christianity, uh, that that impulse was actually quite pure at that time. Um, but then over time with the egotistical nature of humanity, for whatever reason, it got co-opted and got taken and skewed for the benefit of those higher echelons 
to create the second coming of Christ, which I just explained is not possible from the spiritual realms, to set up the stage for a third incarnation, which in some kind of really Christian spaces we hear that the Antichrist is coming. That's also quite disturbing to my psyche to say, okay, so there's a devil that's in, going to incarnate now. Great. Um, but with Rudolf Steiner, it's not so, quite so severe. It's not so polarized. It's more like explaining qualities and tendencies. So if Lucifer is the higher chakras, Christ is the heart center. This third being that's set to incarnate soon, I think, um, which is kind of exciting at the same time, he labels as Aramon. And Aramon has connections with the lower chakras. So it's materialization. His energies are wanting to like kind of densify the human vessel. Um, and there's also connection with some, uh, dark, I guess, an angelic faction of angels that kind of polarized with the dark side. So, you know, on one level, you could say that's sort of the legions of demons and entities that connect with Lucifer. Um, but Rudolf Steiner explains them to be a certain portion or faction of angels that were cast out of the astral plane from Archangel Michael into the earth plane. Um, they were not allowed to incarnate as human beings. It gets a little sci-fi, I know, but this happened around, I think Rudolf Steiner says around 1840, 1850, this is happening. And um, they have a desire, a natural desire to strive for humanity to express immortality because their impulse is not able to reincarnate so they basically attach to the human vessel um at birth this is rudolf steiner's expression or or teaching they attach to us at birth and they live as a doppelganger within our bodies and on one level it's in a way it's an evolution because they're connecting or they're connected very strongly to the um to the elemental energies of the planet. Um, they're connected to the weather. They're connected to the belowness, I guess, the earth's um, electrical and elemental energies. And they have this desire to strive for immortality because they're not able to evolve with the human being. So every time a human dies, they actually have to leave before the human soul leaves the physical body um, and can cannot, kind of develop or stay maintained they have to kind of restart every single time so they have a desire to create an immortality of the human being which is kind of where we get this uh, an aspect of their impulse to get artificial intelligence to create human immortality versus the organic version through the sovereignty of the natural evolutionary impulses of our soul is to create immortality from the soul level, which is a bit, is different. It's not so densified. So if Lucifer is bringing people upwards, Aramon is wanting to bring people downwards in connection with these um, fallen angels that work on the earth plane and incarnate with us to bring a, a fusion about with artificial intelligence. Because Aramon is kind of the incarnation that represents artificial intelligence as well. He has uh, tendencies towards like quantifying, quantifying everything, connecting, correct, connecting data, collecting data. And that's AI, right? Like collecting so much data, collecting so much knowledge in a very mechanical way, in a very, yeah, rote pattern way, which is in a way the lower chakras are representing of that it's our subconscious it's, it's the the way we function in a rote expression below our awareness which gets developed in our subtle energetic growth from zero to seven is the the for the lower two layers and then from seven to kind of i guess teenage to adolescence we we develop our mental body um so uh, those three chakras are kind of connected to aramon so if we don't know that there's a being incarnating that's bringing us towards these impulses of the, mach the machine and that's striving for immortality, you know, we might get taken off into a channel that might not be so beneficial for humanity. And that leads me to a last little memory that I had 
perhaps why I'm so invested in learning about this stuff is when I had my spiritual awakening, one of the first things that came into my mind was that I had pinpointed, uh, chosen this moment in time because it was a fork in the road where humanity would either go down this descending expression into more of like uh, what we see the gray aliens to be like that are disconnected from their emotions and more in that rote expression, that rote pattern, the more mechanical nature versus staying on the natural evolutionary path that includes actually all three of those expressions, the higher wisdom, the Christ consciousness, and the lower um, aramonic rote patterning cold expression uh, that is represented by this being, Aramon, this global um, activator in a way. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but if we can see it for what it is, we can take those energies forward into our own being and use them for our benefit. Use them for the benefit of the whole. So it's not like an egotistical kind of thing, but use them in a way, work with them, alchemize them in a way that allows our body to stay working, connected to our own core, to our own soul, and then, and then take in those energies in a way that grows and evolves our awareness, our consciousness. So it seems to be that for Rudolf Steiner, the balanced expression of this is kind of, it's kind of tantric in a way. It's taking in all of the energies on the earth, <clears throat> everything that we've come from, everything that we are going towards. But as long as we stay within our own core and the zero point being in our heart space, if we're able to bring the higher energies of wisdom through the heart and the lower rote patterns of expression up through the heart, we're going to be able to evolve in a balanced and loving way, as opposed to getting pulled into some sort of transhumanist, densified expression of life that leads to what my spirit gave me as a vision of that kind of gray alien removed from our emotions and kind of trapped and no longer able to evolve, kind of stuck in a descending kind of spiral, which on one level is also natural. Um, but chances are, if you have an awareness of spirituality and a, have a connection to the earth and to your Christic heart, you're going to want to work in the more balanced and upward evolutionary spiral of life, which seems to be what Rudolf Steiner is also offering in his sharings here. So what else did I want to say? Uh, the antidote. So I also kept getting little hits along my path about how we're moving from a dualistic expression to a three-pronged expression. And for me, these books really brought that idea into a deeper um, truth, because if we have those three deities coming in, or avatar beings, or highly evolved global impact souls, we now have three energies to work off of. So in the past, if we only had Lucifer and Christ, it's got this dualistic nature, right? Good and bad. Christ, good. Lucifer, bad. Or if you're working for the satanic side, satanic good, Christ, not so good. However it is, right? Um, so no matter what, because there was only two energies to work from as humans in our development, it's always going to be a duality. You can't get away from it, right? That's just how it has been, how it was. Um, the impulse from the heart is going to work in a way that's always kind of flipping back and forth with the knowledge of the higher levels back and forth back and forth now we have three so it's more of a an evolution it's like a spiral we're going one two three one two three one two three so it's a, a shift in the way things work which is gonna i'm sure make a, a big impact on our planet it's kind of exciting at the same time that it's scary to consider what some people call to be call as the antichrist what some people are going to be calling as jesus what some people call some kind of um, extraterrestrial being connected to technology coming in um, to guide us and to show us that we're actually evolved from from extraterrestrials you know it's it's going to be interesting times but i think if we're able to follow rudolf steiner's suggestion it's going to help us to work with these energies in a healthy way and that is to basically live tantrically through the normal functions of life. So he gives an example of taking that, the qualities of rapture and 
passion and excitement and curiosity and lit up fiery create creativity that comes down from Lucifer, from knowledge, from that creator essence that comes forward from above and bring it down into the most mundane rote, rote, ex, rote pattern expressions of life, which can be, he gave the example of bookkeeping or your taxes or the stock exchange, you know, so bringing our creator essence down from above and bringing it into, so our awareness, our sovereignty, our ability to analyze and at the same time, having that morality of truth coming from the heart center is going to give us two qualities to help balance out. So what happens? What if this radical idea of instead of Lucifer and Christ fighting each other, that they now are working in a three-pronged tandem to evolve and express and, and up-level and in an evolutionary impulse type of way, grow our consciousness. So it really helped me to take everything that was coming through these last couple of years. And instead of having this battle, internal battle of good and bad and getting paralyzed and which one am I, am, am I in? Am I getting duped? Am I getting tricked? Where am I? Who am I? Da, 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 da. To just throw that away to the side, throw away the idea of just having this good and bad, always kind of checkerboard fighting against each other, balancing off against each other, and introducing a third element, which is this new AI rote pattern type of energy and take all three together to create this new way that we work with the world and our surroundings. So I hope that gave you as much insight as it gave me in these last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm going to be reading more of Rudolf Steiner, I think in the months to come. And uh, if you have any further questions about everything that just came through or any ideas to jump off of some of the thoughts that came through, or if you just want to reach out to me with a personal email, um, you can do that too. It's marnie at earthhearthealing.com or .ca. I'm still in a transitionary mode of switching over my email. So do both, .com and .ca, earthhearthealing.com or .ca. And if you just want to write a comment below too, that's always welcome. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, night, wherever you are. Until next. Take it. Stay, Stay in heart. Heart.